Christ, and as my brother was teaching, we came to teach the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you are God's chosen people. Hey! Now, my brother and sister, what's your names? Right here. My brother and sister, what's your name? Oh, Lord. Ebony. Ebony, nice to meet you, Ebony. I made you real. What about you, my brother? Batman. Say it one more time. Patrick. Pat hey. Patrick. All right, so Patrick and Ebony, right? I made you real. Do y'all know who your nationality according to the Bible? Do you know who you are? What's your nationality or your race? Black. All right. Ebony said black. What about you, Patrick? Same thing. Same thing. And what do you think these young men and women would say if I asked them? Israelites. You, you think they would say Israelites? Yeah. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy uh, 28. 10 and 12. Okay. She's been studying. She's she, Deuteronomy 28. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. But she said that they would say that they're Israelites. But I'm going to test that theory. I'm going to test that. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Read it out. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So you said that they would tell me that they're Israelites. But there's a requirement to being an Israelite. Read that. But to fear the Lord thy God. First, you must fear God. If you're an Israelite, you must fear him. Read. To walk in all his ways. Then you must walk in all his ways. Where are his ways found at? Sister Ebony, Brother Patrick. Write in the Bible. Yes, ma'am. Write in the Bible. Read. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. So we must serve him. How do we serve God as Israelites? Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. That's how you know that you're an Israelite. That's it, the Bible. There's requirements. You can't just claim to be an Israelite. You must be one from the bloodline of Jacob. And then you must know the commandments. You must know how to serve them. And how you do that? By keeping the commandments. Right. But as I look around, there's a lot of non-commandment keeping going on. Do you agree with that, Brother Patrick? Yes, sir. Now, I want you to tell me, Brother Patrick, as a man of this community, right? I want you to tell me what commandments that you see are lacking here. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. When the last time a killing happened here? Give me Leviticus 19. I don't know what to say. I don't know about saying that. Okay. I'll let you know this. Guess what? Drug dealing. That's the form of killing. Can you tell me when the last time drug dealing has happened? I'm not going to say all that. Hold, say that one more time, my sister. I'm not going to say all Every that. Every day. Guess what? Did you know drug dealing is a form of murder? Did you know that? Yeah. How is that murder? Because you hook somebody on a substance that they can't live without. <laughs> now that they are hooked, that substance become more important than themselves, their family, their right. wife, their kids, their husband. Now they'll put drugs or that substance above their family. That's Wake how that's murder. And they will kill themselves. They'll do it again and again and again until they die. Unless they're saved by the word. Read that for me. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. It said, Thou shalt not hate, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Drug dealers is a form of hatred. Right. My sister, what's your name? Me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Nadira. Madeira? Nadira. 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 Yeah. All right, I made you real. Now, Nadira, you said there's a lot of drug dealing going on, right? What did the Bible just say about that? Is drug dealing hatred or is that love? That's hatred. That's, That's an easy question. Is drug dealing love or hatred? Hatred! There you go, my young sister. If you sell drugs, you hate your brothers and sisters. That's right. If you sell drugs, you hate your people. Right. That's if the Bible. Read that again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Read. Thou shalt not, thou shalt any wise rebuke thy neighbor. What should you do? Rebuke thy neighbor. What should you do? Rebuke thy neighbor. You have to rebuke your neighbor. That means telling them, stop selling drugs. That's, That's right. a sin according to the Bible. Right. You will die if you keep selling drugs. Right. Another thing you should do by rebuking is, guess what? Sisters, cover up. Stop being out here half naked. Right. That's a sin according to the Bible. Right. So I must rebuke you so you can learn thy ways. Hey. I have to rebuke you if I love you. That's how I show love. That's the Bible. Read on. And not suffer sin upon him. 
Why? Because I don't want to suffer sin upon you. What is that sin? Give me uh, 1 John 3. What is sin according to the Bible? Nadir, listen up, listen up, family. Listen up. What is sin according to the Bible? What's that? I can't hear you, sis. Let him, let him ride by. What is sin according to the Bible? What is sin according to the Bible? Disobeying God's law. Woo! There we go. Now, oh, oh, don't walk away too quick. I like that. Give her a hand clap. Give her a hand clap. She on it. She on it. Sister Nadir, all praises. Now, I got a question for you, my sister. Is it okay for a woman to wear pants? You say yes? Give me... Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Thank you, my young sister. It, so, guess what? You may not have known this, right? But it is not okay for women to wear pants. Only men should be wearing pants. Right. Read this. That's the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Listen up. Women should not be wearing pants according to the Bible. According to the scripture. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. It said the woman should not wear, should not wear what pertaineth unto a man. Now, my sister, do you have a zipper in front? Now, what need do you have for the zipper, my sister? Exactly. But what need do I have? Well, my brothers have. There's a need for them. But there's not a need for you showing that, guess what? That is not meant for you. Now, what's meant for you? Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall I or any of my brothers put on a woman's garment. And what would that be, my sister? Say it again. I can't hear you, sis. A dress. There we go. How crazy will we look as a prophet of God wearing a dress out here? Would any of your, thank you, a fool who would take me serious wearing a dress out here? But everybody love watching Medea. Everybody love watching Big Mama House. That's funny to us. Everybody love watching Martin, right? That's sin according to the Bible. How will we look rebuking and teaching and guiding? What kind of man going to protect you in a dress? Nobody. That's right. Nobody. A man's supposed to be a protect, a protection, and he's supposed to provide. But what man going to better protect and provide for you in a dress? Nobody. But what is the role for a woman? Say it again. Almost, almost. I got you, sis. Finish that up, because I want you to know how does God look at you for wearing pants? Or how would he look at me for wearing a dress? Read that again. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So it's abominable to the Lord to see you in pants, sis. Right. So guess what you got to do, right? You got to, now I see you got a uniform on, right? So give me Judges 5 and 11. So I get it. That's how you make your livelihood, right? But according to the According to the Bible, is it okay to wear pants? No, no, no. It is not okay for a woman to wear pants. I hear y'all still saying yes. You're not listening. My young sisters, listen up. It is not okay for you to wear pants. Just like it's not okay for a boy or a young man to wear a dress. Now read that for me. Judges, chapter 5 and verse 11. This for you, Nadir. Read. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. It said they that are delivered from the noise of archers. What's that going into? Slavery. Those people that are in bondage, that are captives. Are we captives here in America? Yes. Were we brought here slaves in America? Yes. So my sister Nadir, this for you. Read that again. They that are delivered by, from the noise of archers uh -huh. in the places of drawing water. The drawing water captivity. Read. There shall they rehearse the righteous There, there shall they read. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So you must rehearse the righteous acts, my sister. What does that mean for you? I know your livelihood calls you to wear pants. Guess what? You have to begin to formulate a plan to where, hmm, can I speak to them and say, hey, can I not wear pants? They may say no, right? Then you got to see, okay, well, what's the next best thing? When I'm off of work, I have to make sure I'm not in pants. And then I have to start to look for another job that doesn't require me to wear pants. Because is it okay for you to wear pants, my sister? Say it one more time. There you go. And that's what you want to base everything off of, my sister. According to the Bible. According to the Bible. Why? Because we're getting our feelings. We have our own opinions. 
our own thoughts. Give me Romans 6 and 20. Why is it so important that my sisters don't wear pants? Why is it so important that my brothers come out of dresses? Bring it up. Listen up. Read. Romans chapter 6 and verse 20. Bring it up. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were for you were free from righteousness. Verse 23. For the way for the wages of sin is death. For the wages of what? The wages of sin is death. If you are in sin, you're going to die. If you are in sin, God will kill you. Now we just read that guess what? We must rehearse the righteous acts. So that means you may have some grace period, right? According to the Bible, you may have some grace period. The Lord might spare you. My sister, you have to cover up your body. You can't be walking out here half naked, skin tight clothing on. My young sisters, same thing go for y'all. And my brothers, y'all gotta step up and begin to rule yourselves. Right. That's what you must do. Because the sister said that, guess what, they're terminated the Israelites. But we read according to the Bible, if you're an Israelite, you will keep the commandments. Guess what? My sister right behind me, you wearing pants, you gotta come out the pants. Why is that? First Timothy 2 and 9. Why is it so important that you come out of pants? Right? Why is it so important that women come out of pants? One, God gonna kill you. Right. We just read that in the Bible. The wages for sin is death. So if you in sin wearing pants as a woman, God will kill you. But guess what? What's the alternative? What's the flip? My young sister, listen up. Read this for her. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. So we in the New Testament, my sister. What's your name? You said Grace? Nice to meet you, Grace. I made you real. So we in the New Testament right now, Grace. Right? Is it okay for women to wear pants? Don't. It's not, okay. And why is there, what's the importance of women not wearing pants? Okay, so one thing that we read is, the wages for sin is death. But here's another aspect of it. Get me, read this, and then jump to Sirach 42 and 10. Sorry. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So, my sister Grace, what is modest? What does modest mean? You're not sure? All right. So modest means covering up, right? So, for example, if I was in modest, I would be out here in um, with my shirt off or with a, a skin-tight white beater or some, um, some short shorts. But me, that would be in modest. Now, I'm still wearing the clothing that, uh, that men should wear, Right? I'm not wearing a dress, I'm not wearing a skirt, but the article of clothing is too revealing. So likewise for you, my sister, that's a crop top, right? Guess what? A crop top is in is immodest, according to the Bible. So you got to put on a blouse, right, that covers you. And the importance of that is going to be in the next verse, but read on. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness. So a certain, a certain spirit comes on you when you dress half naked. Right. You may you may think, no, I, I just want to look pretty. But believe it or not, you check yourself in the mirror before you come out. Believe it or not, what they call it, slaying. You be like, I'm slaying or I'm killing it. Right? You believe that you're going to attract the male gaze, the male attention. But it's good attention. Grace, give me some rock, 42 and 7. Uh, yes, sir. I'll read that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The definition of modest. So this is where you can find, you can look it up on Lassus. Read. Neither bold nor self-assertive, uh -huh. tending toward difference arising from or, or characteristic of a modest nature. So to be modest, to be shamefaced, right? You're not bold. You're not in men's faces. You're not loud, right? But guess what? As a dressing, you're, you're dressing loud in a sense too. But read that for me. Yes, sir. Observing the properties of dress and behavior. Decent. Of dress and behavior. Of dress and behavior. Why, do, why are those two together? What's so important about your behavior when it comes to how you dress? Bring it up. Guess what? If you put on some combat boots, right, and some cargo pants on, and some, some, um, some gloves that got knuckle protection, what kind of spirit do you think that's going to put on you? That's going to put a fighting spirit upon you. Or if you put your, you know, who don't know this, put your hair up in some braids, put some Vaseline on your face. What you ready to do now? What you ready to do? Come on, Israel. 
We ain't new to this. That's right. What you ready? You ready to scrap? Right. She got her hair braided up. She got some Vaseline on her face. She ready to get. She took the earrings out. She kicked the flops off. She ready to get down. Why? Because the way she dressed affects her behavior. That's right. And the Bible's telling you that. Was that it? Yes, sir. All right, now give me Sirach 42 and 7. What's the importance of how you dress? My sister Grace, read this. Sirach chapter 42 and verse 7. Deliver all things in number and weight. And, and put all in writing that, that thou givest out or receivest in. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and, and foolish. Right. That's why we are here teaching read. And the extreme aged that that contended with those that are young. Read that from the top. Read it again for me. Read it smoothly. Sir. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. So we are here to teach you because you may not know. So you, you are unwise in the Bible, Grace. And that's fine. We're here to teach, not just you, but the whole community. Because our community is lacking God's laws. Right, right. That's why we are so destroyed. That's why we have so many baby mamas and baby daddies. That's why we have so many single parent homes. Why? Because we lack God's commandments. And we're going to read one of those. Read. And the extreme age that contended with those that are young. Read. Thus shall thou be truly learned and approved for all men living. Verse 10. Verse 10. In her virginity, let she... Start at verse 9. Yes, sir. Verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. My sister Grace, do you live with your father? Okay, did you grow with your father? My two sisters right here, did y'all grow with your father? My, yeah, I'm, yeah, in the trunk. My sister's in the trunk grabbing groceries. If you look around, is the father's in this community. Right, she's shaking her head. No, the fathers are not in the community. Right. And why? What's the importance of that? Read this verse again. What's the importance of a father or a father figure? Read that. The father waketh for the daughter. The father waketh for the daughter. Not the mother. It said the father waketh for the daughter. Hey. Why is it so important that the protection waketh for the daughter, right? Because that's what the man is. He provides protection and, excuse me, he provides protection, right? Hey. That's another thing. If you're not watching your kids, you're an ostrich. You cannot let your kids just run wild outside and then anything can happen to them, but you won't know it. You won't know it until it's tonight, right? The sun go down, it's 9 o'clock, 9.30, and then you just happen to look down where my kids at. That's an ostrich behavior. That's why I said the father waking for the daughter. Because there's a certain care that a father has for his daughter. Read. For the daughter... When no man knoweth. When no man knoweth. When you're not thinking about it, a father will rise up and meditate. He will think, how can I protect my daughter? But guess what? When you have single parent households with mainly the mothers raising the child, can you have that? Not likely. Read. And the care for her taketh away sleep. What does the care for his daughter do? Take it away sleep. The care for your daughter will take away sleep. What is that care going into? My sister. My sister, going into the trunk. Earlier you said that the father's not in the neighborhoods, right? What is the importance of a father to you? Say it one more time. There you go, to raise and teach them things that they need to know. Now, a mama can teach the children things too because she's the first teacher. What's so important about daddy, right? What's so important about daddy is he's going to lay the Lord down in the house. Right, right. Right, your child may get big enough to look you in your eyes, right? They may start smelling themselves. But when daddy in the house, he shut all that down. Right. Right? And a part of that is him waking when no man knows. He understands the psychology and the mentality of his daughter, of his wife, of his family. And what's the importance of that? Read. And the care for her, take it away, sleep. Read. When she is young. When she is what? When she is young. When she is what? When she is young. I see a lot of little girls running around here in tight short shorts. I see a lot of young women walking around here half naked. So the father will take care of her when she is young. Why is that? Lest she pass away the flower of her age. Uh -huh. And being married, lest she should be hated. Lest she should be what? 
Hey, Ted, is a black woman loved in America? No. Is a black woman cherished in America? No. Is a black woman protected in America? No. Why is that? Because she is stereotyped and she actually behaves this way as a loud mouth, rude woman. Right. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 